Made some rearrangements to my desk and I thought today might be an interesting time to share them with you because I got a new monitor and it's 32 inches and it's got thin bezels and it really cares about dynamic range and it was cheaper than the pro stand so that was cool. And this is definitely subject to change that's why it's the you know January 2020 edition because I may do something else in the future who knows. But at this point in time here is my desk setup let's begin. <laughs> So let's start with the main attraction, the monitors. What do we got? Of course, the iMac Pro on the far left. Yeah, it's moved over to the side. Not my favorite monitor anymore. And it honestly never has been because 5K display, obviously, it's very rich. It's very crisp. Brightness levels are fine. Dynamic range is excellent. I don't care what any people have to say about stupid mini LED contrast ratios, but the display's okay. It's just very reflective. It's very glossy. The bezels are very large. And honestly, the iMac Pro looks very good off angle. Front angle, it's just kind of eh. It's especially in today's world when we're used to such thinner bezels, but that's why I have two other monitors on my desk. The BenQ 4K 32-inch entertainment monitor, which I guess BenQ makes a lot of different 4K 32-inch monitors, but this one specifically is meant for more HDR type stuff. Full disclosure, they did send me this monitor, but no contract, no payment. They're not asking me to say anything. Everything I say about this monitor is completely my own opinion. And my own opinion is it's pretty good. You know, I think this individual one is about 800 bucks off the their website. I'm sure you can find it cheaper elsewhere, and it's okay. I think that price isn't great. If your main priority is just having a 4K display that's 32 inches, then this is fine, but there's probably cheaper ones out there. Even from BenQ, I believe they make gaming monitors of the same resolution and size that are still 60 hertz, like this one is. It's nothing fancy in the refresh rate department, but hey, I appreciate them for sending it to me, and it works and looks great. It's now become my primary monitor. It's front and center, and I'm kind of annoyed because 26 seven inch monitors were my thing. I've always been comfortable with those. But as soon as they sent me this 32 inch one, now that just feels so much better. I have so much more breathing room on the desktop. And now I feel like 27 inch monitors are too tiny. So in the future, I don't know, I'd like to have three 32 inch monitors <laughs> because it just feels so much more spacious, probably because bezels can be so thin now. But this monitor also has built in speakers, which is kind of nice. I bet something a lot of you may not be thinking about when you see my setup is where does the sound come from? Because the iMac Pro has pretty great speakers in it, but now that it's off to the left, doesn't that throw things off a little bit? Well, I've actually routed my audio output to come out of the iMac Pro and the BenQ speakers simultaneously, so I'm not getting, you know, complete 360 degree sound, but it all blends together very well. I'm getting a lot of the benefits of the iMac Pro speakers, while the BenQ speakers are actually front-facing, which I appreciate as well, and it results in a fairly clear audio experience. Again, I'm no audiophile. I'm sure this does not sound amazing. I just don't like having dedicated speakers on my desk facing me. Some YouTubers do that. I'm not really a fan of it. Sounds great to me. I'm happy with it. The display colors are very good. I do notice a bit more dynamic range, but it's nothing terribly groundbreaking. They have lots of different options and monitor settings for HDR type stuff, but not really for me. I'm fine with just the default, you know, Apple preset for colors and everything work great for me. And all the videos I make and also all the videos I watch are typically now with that monitor. And then come to the right a little bit. I have a monitor that I bought from a friend. This is definitely not really meant to be used with a Mac. This is a gaming monitor, but the main reason I like like it is I'm just a refresh rate junkie. I just like higher refresh rates and I really wish Apple sold monitors that went above 60 hertz because I would totally get those but they don't. So this is an Acer Predator G-Sync monitor which absolutely I'm not utilizing to its full potential because I don't have an Nvidia graphics card. You should definitely use this monitor with a gaming PC though because it works great for that and Mac OS actually does support up to 165 hertz refresh rate so I put things on there that I do a lot of scrolling with. I know it's terrible but I appreciate that when I'm scrolling either through Twitter and Discord, which are basically always on that monitor at all times, and I scroll through those a lot, and I notice the motion to it. It's very pleasing to the eye, and despite what a lot of people think, I'm actually very happy with having lots of different types of monitors on my desk. I know from an OCD point of view, you would love to have just the same monitor on my desk, not like all these different bezel sizes and screen sizes and resolutions. Once 5K, once 4K, and then this Predator is 1440p. But honestly, from the average viewing distance, where I'm just sitting in my PewDiePie chair and looking at my screens, they all look the same to me. It all blurs together. 1440p is plenty enough resolution for me and 4k is just overkill and 5k is just stupid in my opinion. You don't need 5k on a desktop monitor and anything above that is just trying to be a show off. You won't notice the difference. If you do, it's a placebo, okay? Let's put it that way. <laughs> but oh yeah, one thing I do like about the BenQ monitor is it not only has HDMI and DisplayPort inputs, it also has USB-C. It's not Thunderbolt. None of these other monitors are Thunderbolt 3, but you don't necessarily 
necessarily have to go over Thunderbolt 3 in order to support a high refresh rate or a high resolution. So the BenQ is connected to my iMac via USB-C to HDMI, just using a standard HDMI port and that supports 4K at 60. But I also have a USB-C cable plugged into the BenQ that allows me to plug into my iPad Pro if I want, and that will output video from my iPad to the big 32 inch screen and it will simultaneously charge the iPad, which I didn't know was a thing. So that's kind of cool. I can put stuff on my iPad, which I'd use for all of my thumbnail editing. I can blow that up onto the monitor or just use it to charge my iPad if I need to. So that's pretty handy. And now let's talk about some of the other stuff on my desk. Obviously I have a Tesla smaller than most, but I do like to keep it right on the little iMac Pro dock there. It was a gift. I'm not that weird. Okay. I didn't buy it myself. It was a Christmas present and someone said, Hey, I bought you a Tesla for Christmas. And I was like, hey, why don't you do it for real grandpa? Come on. And of course the pixel stand, the one made by Google product that I actually use on a daily basis. That pixel stand is just one of the best wireless chargers I've ever used. It's just so elegant and so simple and it doesn't rock around too easy. And it was sent to me by Google. So I kind of like keeping it around for that reason, even though Google doesn't like me anymore, but please keep the paychecks coming. I appreciate it. Of course, that's typically where my iPhone is. If it's charging, if we move a little bit more to the right. We have my Lexar CFast card adapter. That's what I shoot my videos on. And that's how I import everything to my iMac. And this is another thing I really like about the BenQ monitor. I'm sorry, I keep bringing it up, but they have this nice little dock area that you can easily arrange things inside. And that's where I keep both my AirPods. <sighs> That's right. And also keep the BenQ remote, which is something I wish more individual monitors came with. I think it's really, really handy that I don't have to reach around and try to mess around with the controls on the back of the BenQ monitor. The fact that I can just change inputs from that or even change the volume because it does have built-in speakers or change HDR type settings from that remote makes it way handier than other monitors that have very confusing buttons on them. So appreciate the remote coming with the monitor. That's neat. And of course my Ridge carbon fiber wallet. As for keyboard and mouse, I know I'm a little bit weird, but I'm an Apple guy who doesn't like the MX Master. I have tried it before. A lot of people recommend that mouse to me and I edited a video with it and it's just not what I grew up with. I don't hate you as a person. I hate you as a creator if you use that thing, but I think it has something to do with me loving to scroll back and forth and up and down so quickly in Final Cut Pro timelines and that MX Master like separates those scroll wheels too much for me. It's like it goes up and down pretty well, but the side to side with that little thumb scroller is just so sluggish to me and I was joking earlier. I don't actually hate you. Okay, calm down. Stop typing. I just grew up with the magic mouse and I've been very comfortable with it. We all have different personal preferences. Okay. I get that the magic mouse is terrible for gaming. I just don't do much gaming on my Mac. Okay. That's a lie. I play a ton of Minecraft and that mouse is super annoying for that, but most of the time it's editing and the magic mouse works well for that. Yes. I have to charge it with that stupid method every six weeks. So typically I get a notification. It says the mouse battery is a little bit low. After that, I just plug it in overnight. I wake up and it's fine for another six to eight weeks. I'm also a fan of the keyboard that came with the iMac Pro. Just at the time I got it, it was very exclusive. Space gray and everything. But now Apple sells it separately. So I guess nothing is special anymore. The other thing I've never actually brought up in my desk tours before is the microphone I use. And this mic is typically used if I have conversations with people on this machine. I like having a good mic. And also I record my podcasts at this desk with my buddies Nick Answeeney and Randy Vasquez. We're back with series four, by the way. So new podcasts are coming every week hopefully. A lot of people ask what microphone I use and it's very funny. I am not an audio expert at all. All I literally did was went on Amazon. I searched good microphone and looked at the one with the highest reviews at the cheapest price point and that's how I found the Behringer. Am I saying that right? The Behringer XM8500 which it's nothing fancy. You have to be pretty close for it to pick you up but when it does pick you up it sounds decent. I'm not gonna say it sounds amazing but it gets the job done. That's gonna be the name of my autobiography someday. And this this is all sitting on an Ikea desk I bought a long time ago. I think it's been three years now. And the reason I love this desk is it's big. It's got lots of room for my stuff. I can just about make three monitors work on this desk. And also it has a motor in it that allows it to move up and down. Not very quickly, but if you notice when I record these videos, why the monitors are so low? No, I'm not standing on a box and no, I'm not eight feet tall. I actually lower the monitors down when I record my videos so that you guys can enjoy my terribly asymmetrical soundproofing and my iPhone box 
Arts collection, and that way the monitors aren't as distracting, because in the past I used to have my monitors in my background. People said it was too cluttered, so I stopped doing it, and now I don't want to change, so don't ask me to. And I think that pretty much sums it up. Uh, other questions you may have. Oh, the iMac Pro, for those who don't know, it's basically the base model, the cheapest one you can get. The only option I changed is I made it the 2 terabyte SSD. Oh, and I also have a Samsung T5 SSD, which they sent to me for free, just because I pre-ordered a Galaxy Fold, and they canceled it automatically for me. So, thank you Samsung. Appreciate the external SSD. That works really great, by the way. I'd recommend it. Maybe just keep pre-ordering foldables and see if they keep sending you stuff. There's also a couple home pods hidden back there. Surprisingly, they still make a lot of noise. And I think that wraps it up. So, let me know what you think of my desk by hitting me up over on Twitter or joining my Discord. And you know what? I actually don't. My Twitter's been blowing up too much with all these replies of tweets that are like three days old. Just stop talking to me. I'm tired. This is your Alpsheep here. I'll see you in the next one.